There's been a lot of discussion in blog posts and articles about Final Cut X media management and its library and how you can move the media around via the consolidate commands and not physically increase the media space on your drive, as in it won't duplicate media, it just uses something called hard links to be able to move that media around. I didn't quite understand it and couldn't grasp it, and I even uh, want to give credit where credit's due. I sat with uh, Sam Essman of FCP Works, and he kind of walked me through this, and I still didn't quite get it until I did it myself. So as this quick tip, I wanted to record a quick screencast and walk through that again and show you how this works, because it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. What I have here in this project, it's a 700, over 700 gig library file here. I'm going to make a new folder and just call that external media. What I want to do is move all the media and the cache out of that 700 gig library into this external media folder. If I go back in, in here to Final Cut 10 and I hit the library and I go to modify my storage locations, I'm going to just move those locations to that external media library for both the media as well as the cache. When I hit OK here, it's going to ask me to want to include my render files, and I'll say include them. And Final Cut 10 has just moved the cache to that external media folder. If I go back over there, I'll see now I have this uh, five, over 5 gig cache in the external media folder. If I go back to Final Cut 10, I can now go and say let's consolidate that media into that library there on my G Speed. When I hit consolidate, it's going to take uh, just a couple seconds for Final Cut 10 to be able to do that operation. If I move back out here to the Finder, what I'll see now is that actual library size is getting smaller as Final Cut 10 moves all that media into this external media library. That's down to 56 gigs now. If I hit Get Info on this uh, external media folder, that's now uh, uh, over 650 gigabytes of space. So it's moved all that media there. And If I go back into Final Cut 10 now and I actually um, check out one of my clips, Reveal that in the project, reveal that in the finder, I see now that is in this external media folder. So all that media has been moved from the library into the external media folder. Now if you're wanting to um, collaborate with another editor, it's easier, you know, it's easy to move edits and things like that via the lib you know, zipping up your library. I wouldn't zip up the 56 gig library, but it just takes that media out of that library, puts it into, into an external folder. Now the flip side of that being if I wanted to move that media back into that library, if I go back to my uh, library properties and I go back and modify my settings, and let's just put everything back in the library, I'm going to hit OK, include those render files. What you'll see here now is that, you can see I have 55 terabytes on this new drive. What I'm going to do now when I hit uh, consolidate, that's going to move all that media back into the library, and you'll see that the size of this library here is going to increase as it starts to move that media back in. It didn't physically copy anything because my the size of my uh, available space didn't change, but now my library is back to uh, 700 over 700 gigs. And if I go back and I reveal in Finder this particular clip, it is now back in the library itself, as you can see just from that path right there. What I can do now is go back in here and if I choose this external media folder that's still over 600 gigs, I can just uh, Right click that and let's just move that to trash. I'm going to go back into uh, Final Cut 10 and all that media is still online because it's pointing back to the actual uh, consolidate into the actual library file. It's kind of a handy cool thing to know if you can understand how that works you can make use of, uh, of moving this media around if you need to for um, archiving purposes is a really nice thing I can see after you're done with an external with all your external media, you can move it back into a library and then just archive that one uh, library file. And then when you have to unarchive it, maybe move it back out of the library if you need to collaborate or um, be just more comfortable having media outside of the library. But regardless, it's kind of a cool, uh, it's a very cool media management feature and one that I didn't understand until I actually sort of did it myself a couple of times. Hope this helped. I'll add one more little thing here. You saw me throw that folder of external media in the trash. If I go down here to my trash can, I actually have uh, f several different folders here because I did this operation a couple different times before I actually uh, was comfortable deleting the files. If I go in here and I hit Get Info, you'll see some of these different, uh, this one's 600 gigs, this one's 600 gigs. So these are all external media folders that I, that I made as I was sort of testing this out, trying to figure out how this whole thing works. 
So that's you know over a terabyte right there if you're counting the size of those of those uh, particular external media folders that I made. If I am going to close those up, let's take a quick look at my space that's on this RAID here. This was um, there it is, 55.29 terabytes. I'm going to now uh, empty my trash. That space did not change, still 55 terabytes, because that's this thing called hard links that it's able to see that media in more places than one and move it around in a very, uh, very quick manner.